thank you everyone for having me here. And I feel like Chuck Norris is coming here because there's so many people in here and I'm like, I'm not famous, why is everyone here? So, but they asked me to give the presentation, so I will give the presentation about my family roots in Texas, Polonia. Here's my introduction, uh, my family in Texas, a uh, map of Polish parishes, settlements in Texas, uh, my family history, my, ex my villages of my roots, Venglevo, Pogodzinska, Lednogora, Sławno, Poznan, Mud. Mur, <laughs> And the last one, please. Goslina? Goslina. Goslina. I will also talk about, uh, you know, Texas, Polonia, U.S. history, uh, the first Polish settlements, uh, actually the first Polish parish, first uh, uh, church is actually in Slavno, mm -hmm. not in Slavno, excuse me, Pana Maria. Uh, talk a little bit about the Battle of San Jacinto, uh, a little bit about General Kosciusko and Kowalski. Also talk about three Polish migrations, three Polish immigra uh, immigrations to Texas, Nalevum, Sardinus, and Gospodki. Uh, also talk about uh, the Polish language, the different dialects, uh, Polish culture, uh, talk a little bit about the, we celebrated uh, Poland's 100, 100 independence, uh, 100 years of independence uh, last November 17th of the year 2018. My parents had their 35th wedding anniversary years ago. Uh, in 2013, ending level, very special moment for me as well as my family. Uh, also talk about my father's uh, collaborations with uh, Texas a and University, Poland with uh, Polish students, agriculture students, farmers, uh, university dignitaries, your Mashalki, and even hosting your president, President Duda. Um, and also, I will show you, my father was awarded the Medal of Merit. Uh, you probably already know this. Medal of Merit is the highest honor received by a non-Polish citizen. My father um, was awarded this medal for all of his collaboration he has done with Texas A&M, the state of Texas, and all over Poland. Okay, a lot of my Polish friends always ask, how big is Texas? There you go, it is twice the size of Poland. Jeszcze chcę podpowiedzieć tego, że jak widzicie, ta mapa Polski jest obrócona do góry nogami, ale dlatego, żeby się to umieściło w Teksas, tak? Czyli widzicie Polskę, która jest na niebiesko, która obrócona i Teksas, i ten Teksas widać, że jest praktycznie powierzchniowo dwukrotnie większy sam stan Teksasu od Polski. And, and everybody always asks me, where is your city in Texas? Houston, everybody knows where Houston is, okay? I live right there in Commerce Station, very close to the university. And here is the uh, size of Texas compared to all the countries in Europe, and you can see how many countries can fit inside of Texas. And we always say in Texas, everything is bigger. Homes, buildings, picked up. I mean, dużo picked up. <laughs> Which I, for my truck, I could not drive in Poland. It's too big. <laughs> and here, actually, actually this is in Bryant, which Bryant and College Station is so close. They join cities. It's mm -hmm. like one big two cities, but one big city because it's so close. This is what it looked like in 1870, in the year 1870. Here is Bryan again, you know, in downtown or city square in the year 1900. 
Okay, I really love this slide because all the red points is all the different Polish settlements in Texas settled by Polish people many, many years ago. And a lot of these different settlements still celebrate the their Polish culture and heritage all the time. And my father is president of Texas Polonia, where all the all the uh, the churches and the groups all get together and we celebrate one Dojin. <laughs> Nawet w większym wymiarze niż my, bo my w Poznaniu wiadomo, te dożynki nie obchodzimy, tak? Chociaż pod Poznaniem w wielu miejscowościach one się odbywają. Natomiast tam one się odbywają naprawdę też jeszcze z dużą, dużą jak to się mówi, pompą i to naprawdę fajnie jest realizowane. There were three different migrations. Now Lebanon, Sutter Devnos, and Gospodki. I will talk a little bit about each one. I won't go in detail with all because it will take a little bit of time. The, the first Polish migration was, was the people from Silesia. And they are the ones that made the oldest Polish church in the United States, in Pana Maria. The, my, uh, the Sardernos is uh, the Polish migration that came in 1980s. Um, many, many of these uh, Polish immigrants came from all over Poland. They settled in major cities of Texas, including like Houston, Dallas, San Antonio, Austin, El Paso, all the bigger cities. That's where they settled. And Ghost Potki, the third Polish migration, the uh, majority of them uh, are settling, uh, moving to California. Chicago, New York, and New Jersey, but also as well as Houston, Dallas, Fort Worth, and all the big cities in Texas. Texas and Poland is like a family. Okay. USA, Texas, and Poland history. Uh, the first settlers, first Polish settlers, excuse me, first Polish settlers to North America. There were 11 Polish families that came to Jamestown, Virginia, the northeast part of the United States, in 1608 to establish an English settlement in America. The Polish families were skilled craftsmen with wood, you know, tar and, and glass. Um, the American Revolution, they, the Polish people helped us fight Polish, I mean, American independence in 1776 with two Polish generals, Tadeusz Kosciuszko and Kazimierz Pulaski. And also, I have Kosciuszko in my family roots. My father with, with his history, my father loves history, and he's trying to find a connection to see if we're actually connected to General Tadeusz Kosciuszko. Maybe, maybe not, but we will see. Uh, the, the, the Poles also fought, fought in the Texas Revolutionary War in Goliad, Gonzalez, San Jacinto, or Spita Yasi, that's what my father likes to say. In 1836, uh, they've also helped us with the Battle of the Bows, was played by a Polish soldier at the Battle of San Jacinto when Texas won its independence from Mexico. Uh, the Texas Battle of San Jacinto, or Shmita Yasset, in 1836, uh, the namesake, I cannot pronounce it, it's Greek. Shmita Yasset, uh, a Polish uh, Salatian saint, canonized and became a saint. It is also uh, has a Jeka river uh, named uh, San Jacinto. Uh, first polar settlement in the USA was Pana Maria. It's about three hours south of where I live in 1854. Uh, second wave of Polish immigrants came after the Civil War in 1867 as they settled along the Brazos River. And I'll, I'll show you on the flag. The Brazos River basically runs like this. And 
most of the Polish families all settled on the river because of water. And, and also had the most fertile soil close to the river. Okay, I love this slide. There's also, I did know there's more than one Polish dialect, but my grandparents do not. They only speak the study of the Polska dialect. And my father uh, uh, usually comes to Poland, you know, before pandemic. Uh, sometimes he will come three, four times a year to Poland to do collaboration with either Moszelki, university dignitaries, uh, university students, or farmers. And then my father always uh, tells my job that he understands and speaks Polish very well. As my father, my father will tell him in Polish, I will tell you in English, that always tells him about his trip, who he met, and what he did. And then my, my Jadek will tell my father, because my father, you know, is learning new vocabulary, my Jadek would say, Jim, I don't understand anything. Now talk Polish like you're supposed to. Meaning, he only knows the old dialect from Puzma. My Jadek and Bacha, doesn't know the new vocabulary. They only know the vocabulary that was used before, you know, electricity. Ja mam chcę powiedzieć, to właśnie to jest to, co Jens powiedział, tak? Że ten nasz język nowoczesny, który my się dzisiaj posługujemy, on się znacznie różni od tego, którym się posługuje jego dziadek czy babcia. I tak jak, tak jak tu wspomniał, w momencie, kiedy ktoś mówi językiem nowoczesnym, to oni uważają, że to nie jest ten prawdziwy język polski, że ma mówić po, po polsku, a nie mówić tak jak, tak, jak w tej chwili mówi. I to śmiesznie brzmi, bo oni uważają, że ten język polski to jest tamten język. I my zresztą mamy takie doświadczenia też, że przyjeżdżają do nas czasami goście, którzy się uczyli polskiego od rodziców czy dziadków z Polonii Amerykańskiej i ten język szczególnie brzmi śmiesznie, jak mówią, dla nas oczywiście śmiesznie, jak mówią młodzi ludzie starym, przedwojennym albo jeszcze starszym językiem. Tak jak tutaj James ma do czynienia z językiem już dialektami sprzed powiedzmy tam 100 czy 200 lat, no to oczywistym jest, że ten język się zmienia. To pokazuje, jak język polski żyje, jak on cały czas ewoluuje, a on tam po prostu stanął w miejscu. Także to jest naprawdę wspaniałe doświadczenie. Myślę, że będziemy, będziemy jeszcze niejednokrotnie mogli tego języka posłuchać. And uh, the villages of my family is right here. I mean, Glebo, Lidnogora, Kubiaz, Dobo, Sławno, Polska, Wieś, Zolątka, Muro, Wana, Gośnina. Dziękuję. Jasewo, Elis, Nowo, i Radny. Dziękuję. Bardzo proszę. And talking about the old dialect, my grandparents only know this, these old dialect words. And you might know. Yeah. So that's why my Jadek would always say, I don't understand anything. Talk like we teach you when you were a child. No, tej głównie słów oczywiście chwale jest. Tych słów chwale jest więcej, tu są przykładowe. Here is the kościół. Here is the kościół in the level. That is the most special place. For the mother cabbage family. Jeszcze z, przepraszam, zlokalizuję to węglewo wam. Ono jest koło powiedzi. Kto jest bezpośrednio przylega do powiedzi. Kto, kto tam te rejony zna, to na pewno przez to węglewo przejeżdżał, bo to trudno e, nie przejechać. Natomiast, natomiast to jest właśnie ta rodzinna miejscowość przodków Jamesa. This was actually in 2009, the first time I come to Poland. Now in 2021. 
I have been to Holy Lady 12 or 13 times. Okay, here's my family. Lawrence and Anya come from the club. And that is their children. Praja Jacobi, Praja De, Praja De Brat, and uh, sisters and brothers, I believe. And this is the uh, picture of uh, my Pra 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 Babusha. <laughs> Uh, from Scott Kosciuszko, also Kevich. With her, she is the reason why I have Kosciuszko, and hopefully with my father's research, we can see if there's a connection. But if not, no problem, but it's pretty cool having Kosciuszko in your roots. And here's my uh, product of it, uh, Stefan P. Fronska, on their picture of their wedding day. I remember them very well, and both of them never spoke English. Maybe three or four words, and that was it. It was all Polish. So they inspired my father as well as me. And uh, Lawrence, who come from Ben Glebal, sold two acres of land near the Mazarkevich farm for a school. Uh, <coughs> And this photo was taken in 1927. The, the school is no longer there, but I know exactly where the site was, uh, where the piece of land was. And here's my family. That's my Jajek. That's the guy that never understands my father when he comes back from Poland because he only because my Jade only understands the old dialect. And this is me and my cousin, my Boya, Tata Brat. Uh, there's my father, Chotka, Sostra, Sostra, Mom. Big family. Yeah. And this, uh, this house is the original Mazarkevich house from Lawrence and Anya. And we still have this house and we still have the farm today. And here is uh, a, the church in Slavno, where my Yuzhdyak and uh, Kubiak roots come from. Uh, Fronska Mazarkevich, my Pravapapche, she is Yuzhdyak uh, from home. So that's Kilt uh, Yuzhdyak, he, he come from Slavno. He was born on uh, June 29, 1954, and uh, I think this is a, maybe a Vesela or baptism. Another photo of my uh, of the, the Polish settlers in the early 1900s and 1934 in Chapel Hill because it was a big community and they all spoke Polish. And here is my frog, Bobsha, when she was a baby. And that is her family in Chapel Hill. Okay. That same young girl is right here. <laughs> Many years later. Jedna chwila przy przełożeniu fotki, a zobaczcie ile lat życia danego człowieka, tak? Przed chwilą widzieliśmy jako dziecko, a teraz już widzimy. <laughs> and, and these people in the back are the children of these two people right here. That's Henry and Stella. They had 14 children. They had 14 children. Yes. Big family. And here's another photo. The lady, the gentleman in the middle. Is uh, is Henry Hughes who is also my father's godfather. Hey. He he fought in World War II. Uh, excuse me, Nicholas uh, is my godfather. Uh, my father's godfather. 
he's the gentleman in the middle with the military outfit. And here is my family roots. This is my Javik Rujina Bakcha Rujina. My Bakcha Rujina is from Inovroslav in Toro area. My Javik is from Vinglovo, Vidnagora, Suavno, Hoznan. And here are the names my family members. And here it is not my family, but it is Polish family in Washington County, the Kobiat of Chapel Hill. This is a Sandowski family band. And one thing I love to do on the weekends when I'm not working is going on YouTube. And that's actually how I found this school, by the way. I, I love to listen to old style Polish folk music, like Obedeki, uh, music that you play for weddings, and I just love listening to uh, old fo folklore music with my father. But this is a band, uh, the Sandowski family band, that uh, would play for weddings. This is me and Dad playing, having fun, and my father plays and sings in Polish. The same songs that was brought from my family many, many years ago. This is actually a, uh, a Dojiki party in Houston. And Houston has a big group, lots of families that are from Poland. And going over there, because Mass is in Polish, and you go over there in Houston, it's like going to Poland without leaving Texas, because Mass is in Polish, everybody speaks Polish, it's, it's awesome. That's Dad again. I don't know what, what uh, Pisonka, my father, is singing, but he's singing. And this is actually at another Polish city about an hour north of me called Bremont. Dad's playing again. You can tell he likes to play, so do I. I only play Mendemic, that's it. And that's our best friend on the left, Brian Mashalik. And here is the picture of Dojinki for all of Texas Colonia. All the, the Polish groups all over Texas get together once a year for one Dojinki, and this is this is it. And everybody will wear costumes, whether it's Krakow, Fyrko Polska, whatever region that they come from, they will wear their uh, respected uh, regional costumes. This is inside the Kostu, and of course, me and Dad wear a Fyrko Polska costume. My father has like five costumes, but he wears Fyrko Polska the most. And actually, this priest. Father Yosef Mushel is from Poland. He's from Katowice. And when he was a young boy, an altar boy, he was Jan Pablo Drugi's altar boy when he was a priest in Katowice. Super cool guy. Here's my, my father with two different costumes, Wolvich and Belka Polska. That is uh, that uh, those two parties, the one on the left is in Chapel Hill, the one on the right is in Houston. And the Medal of Merit from Andre President Duda is right there. <coughs> and here is uh, our uh, Abushka and Jadek that we make every year for our Dojiki in Chapel Hill. And here are our frames right here. Um, the ones on the left, left of, uh, right here, they're from Poland. They're from uh, Malopolska. And here is uh, the Houston uh, Dojiki. And every one of those families, except mine, is from Poland. Uh, most of them come maybe 15, 20 years ago, some five years ago. But this is their Dojinki party, and we also celebrated the 100th 
anniversary celebration of Polish independence. We love to celebrate your holidays and celebrations and anniversaries. And here is uh, the uh, uh, Texas Colonia Bochini with the whole group in there. No, nope, that's not everybody, but that's as much as we could put in the picture. But we thought that was pretty cool. And every year we make the uh, the Jadek and Bacha with the Shaman. And here, here's everybody at the costume in Chapel Hill. And we, they have uh, the signs of the various Polish clubs, like the one on the left is our student, uh, Polish student club at Texas A&M University, my father started. And our student club, we have people from Poland that are studying um, at A&M, and also Polish descendants like, like me that have Polish roots be a part of the club. That's me playing Indian. I love to play. I don't know if I'm any good, but I love to play. But here are our friends from Pobijitska, Andre Horvick playing the accordion, and uh, Stashu Horvick, his brother, playing the trumpet. Very good friends of ours from Pobijitska. And they were our special guests that played for our Dozinki in Chapel Hill. And the picture is showing us doing a procession from the church to the celebration hall and playing music during the procession. And this is my my father and we're uh, sharing bread and salt. And here is our uh, Polish student organization. Um, some of the students are from Poland and then some of them you know, have Polish roots, but this is our um, Polish student organization, and every, every we meet once a month, and we either uh, talk about the Polish language, uh, learn Polish, uh, talk about the different traditions, uh, talk about um, lots about Polish history. Just learn about Polish history in Poland, and also learn about your roots. And this is. Uh, my parents' house. Uh, they are hosting the Texas A&M Polish Student Association Christmas party, and we are, and they they will we will have traditional Polish meal. We will sing kolendi and share opłatę. And here is us having kolendi in Chapel Hill, and we go to several houses and play, play and sing Kalindi, and uh, they will sh share food and share something to drink. And we have also hosted uh, several different Polish groups from Poland, as well as musicians from Poland, to share Kalindi with us. To me, having Kalindi in Chapel Hill is my favorite time of year. <coughs> so much fun. And here are some children uh, singing Kulindi at one of our stops on uh, Kulindi. Here is uh, one of our uh, one of the first years for us to have Kulindi, and this is in front of the original Mazarkevich house from Lawrence and Anya. We, we still have this house today. And this is my parents' house. As you can see, um, back there, Thomas, you can talk oh, about the, 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 the number on the door. The number on the door is on the Święto Czech Kuli, which is like in Poland, we have the most often. And these are the traditional traditions. All the traditions that we have here are still more. Even if I would say, sometimes with more energy and energy, kultywowane niż u nas. Także my pamiętajmy o tej tradycji, bo to jest właśnie piękne, że Polonia amerykańska on nie pamięta, a my czasami nie do końca. Także ja nie mówię oczywiście, że wszyscy, bo to, ale to po prostu faktycznie w Polsce ta tradycja nasza lekko słabnie, a tam cały czas jednak o tym pamiętają. Także bierzmy przykład 
serbowskiej Polonii w przypadku naszych tradycyjnych tradycyjnych At my house, I also have, you know, the numbers above the door. Uh, you know, we have uh, Easter Sunday Delta nuts and what is this? Holy Sviencomka. And this is my parents in big level for the thirty for their thirty fifth wedding anniversary in August two thousand nineteen. And I was honored to be Druzba, and my younger sister was Rudna. Rudna. So that was awesome. There's me, my father, my mother, and my younger sister Stephanie. Jeżeli mogę tylko odpowiedzieć tutaj życzeniem właśnie ojca Jamesa, było zrobić właśnie to odnowienie ślubów małżeńskich na 35. rocznicę, ale w takim starym polskim stylu, tak jak to tak naprawdę prawdopodobnie się odbywało w momencie, kiedy jego przodkowie wy, wyruszyli do Stanów Zjednoczonych. To, co James powiedział, oni wyruszyli tu z Poznania, nie znając języka, nie mając praktycznie niczego i to wszystko tam właściwie na nowo budowali, pamiętając o tej polskiej tradycji. Stąd to życzenie ojca, żeby to odnowienie ślubów małżeńskich było właśnie w takim starym, staropolskim stylu, właśnie w tym węglewie i właśnie w taki, w taki sposób, jak tutaj James nam pokazuje. Dziękuję. And here is the group that we took with us from Texas to Binglevo uh, to help celebrate my parents' anniversary party. And we also went, not just Binglevo and Delta Polska, but we went all over Poland. And this is our friends, Divati uh, from Kobijitska uh, playing for my parents' uh, celebration anniversary party. And this is the dance group uh, dancing for us. And these are my father's uh, exchange students from AM. My father has every year, uh, except this year because of pandemic, but Every year, my father brings 10 uh, agriculture students from A&M and uh, they go to come here to Poland and they learn about the agriculture industry in Poland and how it can relate and help uh, their study. And they uh, do farm studies and it's six weeks long and they get uh, university credit. And my father also brings 10 students from Poland to do farm studies, make each day at a different farm with their area of study. Że tutaj y, o flagach możemy powiedzieć, tak? Że flaga Teksasu i Polski jest podobna. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Zobaczcie, flaga z prawej strony, tak? Też jest faktycznie biało-czerwona, tylko różni się tą, tym, tym elementem niebieskim. Yeah, this picture was taken in front of the presidential palace in Warszawa. And here is my father's, you, you, you just saw these students from Texas. These are the students from Poland, from all over Poland. And this is in Chapel Hill. This was in front of a, a real open uh, cowboy saloon. But we did not go inside because my father, you know, very strict, you know, no, you know what I mean, no drink, you know, only take a photo because my father is very strict because when it's time to work, it's time to work. And fun can be later. But we took a picture with the Texas flag, American flag, and of course the Polish flag. And here is uh, our, our, we have Polski Jean every year. This is our first one in the year 2014 at the Texas State Capitol, which is located in Austin, Texas. And this was all of Texas Colonia. And these people right here, these, these four people right here, is the group Tekla Kletimitsa. You may have heard of them. Uh, I believe seven or eight years ago, they were, they competed in mob talent and they went second place. And here on the left is the proclamation or certificate 
uh, the former governor, Rick Perry, made it official, Polsky G, as a holiday. And here is uh, the Polish folk group, uh, Babel, uh, from Houston, Polonia, uh, dancing uh, for everyone inside the uh, Texas State Capitol. And uh, here is our friends uh, in the middle, Zygmunt and Anja Chuklin, from Ustran, uh, Poland. And this is their wedding, and of course, we were going to wear the Polska costume. I'm, I hope that uh, the different regions do not have rivals. My region is better than your region, but we were honored to go to their wedding. And it was in 2008. And here's a picture of my father. And I always joke with my Polish friends because everybody knows my father. And it's like, yes, he does lots of great things for Poland. And I always say, my father's more famous than Chuck Norris. You know, with all of his collaboration and everything that he does with, uh, with Polish students, university students, farmers, uh, Marshalki, anybody, he does a lot of collaboration with, with his university, our state of Texas, as well as Poland. And on the top left is our council general, uh, Robert uh, Ruseczki. The bottom left is the Mashalik from Kodum, uh, Mashalik Sebeski. Of course, you know Lake Buenza, President Lake Buenza. And then uh, right here is uh, was the former Ag Minister, uh, Jan Arnowski. And then, of course, my father with President Duda. And here is a summary of my uh, father's. Uh, Bilateral visits, meaning bringing people from Texas to Poland, as well as bringing people from Poland to Texas. Uh, as of February 6, 2019, almost 400 Texans that my father bring to Poland, as well as almost 300 people from Poland have visited Texas. Uh, there have been 45 visits by Texas uh, dignitaries to Poland and 38 visits by Polish dignitaries to Texas. Uh, the participants represent you know, the government, academia, industry, elected officials, university administrators, professors, researchers, students, musicians, as well as uh, business men, women, and farmers. Here's my dad, President Duda. This is when he uh, won the Medal of Merit, and it's always been a dream for me to meet President Duda, just because, <laughs> you know, I just want to tell him how much, you know, Poland means to me and the family, and how much Poland has gone through you know, two world wars. You went through Nazi occupation, and then after Nazi, you had uh, Russian occupation. And then I, we come here, and Poland is just so nice, big hearted, fun, just amazing people. Like, you know, we, we got hit hard in the early 1900s, but hey, we're still here. We got knocked down, we got up, we keep moving forward because that's how we need to die. And Poland has won. And here is, this is the last slide, this is a picture of Texas, how it looks like, you know, in the western, western part of Texas in this area. It's real Tati Kowalski. <laughs> And to Kuya Bazo, of Nashville. Oh, Here in a moment, I want to show you a very uh, short video. 
of my university that I'm very proud of, as well as Poland. Za chwilę zobaczymy, te, zobaczymy o tym uniwersytecie. To jest jeden z ciekawszych uniwersytetów w Stanach Zjednoczonych, także... The video, video is a pretty cool video because it, it's a short tour of the video as well as it has music from our uh, university band, which is a 400-member military band, and it's super cool. University has a very large uh, military group. The Capella that you're listening to is played by the university uh, marching band. of the band is about 400 members. Yeah. 
these guys are Yale leaders, we do not have cheerleaders, but we have 50,000 students on one section of the stadium, and they tell the students what chance that they want to tell the opponent that we are playing. This is at midnight. AM has midnight yell practice where they all go to the stadium at midnight to learn the chance that they will, the cheers that they will be uh, yelling tomorrow for the game. And AM has about uh, 70 to 70,000 students, one of the largest in the United States. Chcę jeszcze dopowiedzieć, że my oczywiście Was wszystkich zachęcamy jako licealistów do tego, byście w przyszłości rozważyli studia zagraniczne. To jest bardzo dobre. My, my jako uczelnia, jak już mówię, my stosujemy też wymiany z różnymi uczelniami. Mamy programy, które pozwalają studiować na przykład jeden semestr czy, czy też rok w innej uczelni zagranicznej i głęboko wszystkich zachęcamy. Tylko niestety co roku mamy ten problem, że, że trudno znaleźć chętnych z kilku podstawowych powodów. Pierwszym podstawowym powodem jest słaba znajomość języka angielskiego. Dlatego zachęcam głęboko, żeby uczyć się języka angielskiego, ponieważ żeby studiować za granicą, trzeba niestety w języku angielskim zdać yy, yy, test. Tak, test, ale i zarówno test języka angielskiego, jak, jak również yy, przedmioty w języku angielskim. Po prostu tak zwaną amerykańską maturę, czy można powiedzieć u nas SATA. Tak? No to już o szczegółach i o, o innych rzeczach opowiemy Wam yy, w innym czasie ale rozważcie, dlatego że wszystkie uczelnie zagraniczne mają stypendia i można o te stypendia się ubiegać. Jeżeli będziecie mieć dobre oceny, jeżeli będziecie mieć dobre wyniki e, poza, bo pamiętajcie, że na uczelnie, na uczelnie, e, uczelnie w Stanach Zjednoczonych bardzo przyglądają się też działalności dodatkowej. Czy macie jakieś wolontariaty, czy macie jakieś zainteresowania. Po prostu szukają ciekawych ludzi. I tak samo właściwie robimy my i teraz e, z uczelnią wyższą będziemy ostro za ostro, można powiedzieć, przykręcać śrubę i te kryteria wstępu na uczelnię wyższą będą zdecydowanie poważniejsze po to właśnie, by wybrać osoby najciekawsze, niekoniecznie najlepiej się uczące, oczywiście to też jest bardzo dobre, jeżeli się ktoś uczy, bardzo dobrze, ale pamiętajcie też chodzi też o tą całą otoczkę poza tym, co, czego uczycie się w szkole, także o waszych zainteresowaniach, pasjach i waszym rozwoju osobistym. Dlatego zachęcam rozważenie studiowania za granicą, a przynajmniej przygotowywanie się do tego, bo, bo jak widzicie, do uczelni mają wiele, wiele lat i spore dofinansowania z budżetu, czego w Polsce nie ma i te uczelnie polskie na pewno nie wyglądają tak jak uczelnie amerykańskie. I to po prostu tego powinniśmy się od Ameryki uczyć i tego powinniśmy się, że tak powiem, temu się przyglądać i starać się u nas wdrażać, co zresztą chyba robimy. Także bardzo dziękujemy, James, jeszcze raz. Ja James nas na pewno jeszcze nie raz odwiedzi w różnych innych tematach też. Dzisiaj to był taki wstęp, także dziękujemy jeszcze raz. Dziękuję.